right, good morning on this Thursday, June 6th. Surf's up. We've got some gnarly waves to tell you about, but first let's take a look outside. Here it is, Pacific Terrace for you. Wow, just foggy out there, super hazy. Now, I want to tell you, it, it's a good time to take advantage of our beaches, but there is a surf advisory in place until Saturday morning. There will be six to 10 foot waves with local sets of up to 12 feet. Now you wanna be aware of strong, dangerous rip currents. If you're headed into the water, please be careful for that. Now here's uh, your average temperatures for the next three days. 69 today and tomorrow, 70 on Saturday. Now in 15 minutes, how things are heating up at our inland valleys. I will have that for you. All right, people living in Escondido are waking up to a full-scale crime scene in their neighborhood after a wanted felon was followed by police last night and shot dead when he aimed a weapon at them. UTTV reporter Tristan Nichols joins us live from the scene. Good morning. Yes, as you can see behind me, it's still a full-scale crime scene. Um, last night at about 8 o'clock, a known felon was being chased by undercover vehicles, undercover officers in vehicles. He was believed to be armed and dangerous. Uh, the police tried to guide him into a car park and he attempted to flee. He crashed into a wall um, before getting out and um, firing or aiming a weapon which is believed to be a shotgun at the police officers. Now the man was shot, they administered first aid, he died at the scene, the body is still here this morning. Anyway, when officers approached the car, they found seven, yes, seven pipe bombs. Now, earlier I was joined by Lieutenant Neil Griffin, press officer for Escondido Police. Here's what he had to say. Then called the Metro Arson Strike Team to the scene. Uh, they located a total of seven pipe bombs in the vehicle. All those, all those pipe bombs have now been uh, rendered safe, and uh, we're beginning our investigation of the actual shooting. Motorists are having to choose different routes to get to and from work. Um, we'll be bringing you the latest uh, throughout the morning. Back to the studio. All right, Tristan, thank you so much for that report. Yes, definitely some uh, frightening moments there. Now, a House committee is holding yet another hearing this morning into the IRS's lavish spending on training conferences just one day after the acting head of the agency placed two officials on administrative leave for their role in these conferences. Now, the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee released an audit that postponed, uh, that pointed rather out several meetings from 2010, now in question. One of the events included an employee conference that cost more than a whopping $4 million. You're actually looking at live pictures, by the way, at the hearing. It is officially underway this morning on Capitol Hill. Senior officials apparently stayed in luxury hotel rooms, which I am assuming is a picture you're looking at right now, and they received free drinks and food. Apparently these rooms also cost more than $3,500 a night. This morning, the Obama administration is on the defense after a report found the government may have collected phone records from millions of Americans without them knowing. A senior Obama official isn't confirming the report, but says the government has the right to collect phone records to protect Americans from terror threats. This all started from a report uh, from the UK-based newspaper, The Guardian. The report said the National Security Agency collected phone records, including phone numbers, location, time, and duration of the calls, from millions of Verizon customers under a top secret order. According to the report, the court order allowed for records to be collected from April up until June 19th. It is now confirmed the gun that accidentally went off killing a 10-year-old boy in Miramar Ranch belonged to the parents of the girl also playing in the garage at the same time. Police say the unemployed parents of the 9-year-old girl were not home when the shot was fired Tuesday afternoon. They had left their 14-year-old daughter in charge while they were out. Eric Cleus and his 9-year-old neighbor were playing with the gun in the garage of the girl's home on Ivy Hill Drive. Now, some neighbors are concerned on how easily the kids got a hold of the gun. It's very sad that a person doesn't take a little more care of where they keep loaded weapons. Especially if, from what I understand, this was a clubhouse for all these kids to go to. All right, and we'll be back in a few minutes with more San Diego First News.